Hey guys, Kush here back with a new video. Today I'm going to talk about augmented reality or we commonly know as virtual reality. But there is a difference. Virtual reality is a computer generated stimulated world which we usually see in games. While augmented reality is basically connecting the virtual reality with your real world. Now these terms sound very fancy but they are not a 21st century concept. You know when I started researching I found that augmented reality was first found in 1963. Ivan Sutherland, a PhD from MIT, is said to be the father of computer graphics. He developed this virtual reality machine in 1963. Can you believe that? These were called Sword of Damocles. The history is pretty interesting behind the name. I have attached the details in the description below. Apart from the Sword of Damocles, Ivan was also responsible for something really astonishing. Let's have a look at that. Ivan devised this pen to write directly on a computer screen in 1963. He called this device a sketch pad and the pen was called a light pen. It is like today's iPad with an Apple pen. Can you believe the amount of contribution he has done in the era when computer was not even heard of? Whoa, just astonishing. But the computer systems were not that sophisticated and it actually took a decade to see a refined version of augmented reality. In 1974, Myron Kruger started painting with computers. Let's check out his video please. Myra Kruger is called an American computer artist who developed these amazing computer interactive work. Video Place was a work of art with computers. The Video Place used projectors, video cameras, special purpose hardware and on-screen sellouts of the users to place the user within an interactive environment. The Video Place is now on permanent display at the State Museum of Natural History located at the University of Connecticut. Over the years development happened but nobody knew what to call this technology. In 1990, a Boeing researcher named Tom Cowdell actually coined the term of augmented reality. After years passed, in 1992, Louis Rosenberg developed virtual fixtures. Virtual fixtures were built for Air Force. The upper body exoskeleton allowed the military to control virtually guided machinery and to perform tasks from a remote operating system. After some years of research, in 1998, a sports channel called Sports Vision came out with a virtual reality line of yellow color during live match of NFL. Now this was unreal to achieve. Let's see why. The virtual yellow line in NFL broadcasts is great. It tells viewers how far the offense needs to advance for a first down. The key challenge in making the yellow line is that the scene is constantly changing, which means that the yellow line has to constantly change. Not only are there three different cameras used for wide shots of the field, each camera pans, tilts, and zooms to follow the action. So the first thing Sport Vision does before the game is create a 3D mathematical model of each football field using laser surveying tools. And during the game, they gather data from the cameras about their pan, tilt, and zoom positions for every single frame. So when the operator specifies that the first down is at the 43-yard line, for example, the computers combine the camera data with their own model of the field to draw the yellow line in the proper perspective and to redraw it for every frame being broadcast to viewers. Sport Vision won an Emmy for it and went on to make virtual visual aids for NASCAR, baseball, sailing, and the Olympics. Up to the year 2000, all the major government agencies were trying to use this AR or VR technology, but it was never really identified as a mass market technology. It was after 9 years in 2009 when Esquire magazine came out with Robert Downey Jr. live on their magazine page. Now, let's see how that happened. Booyah! In your face! And bless your soul. We are presently entwined in an AR environment. Easily the most remarkable way to experience a magazine. Rather than taking questions, and I know you have many, I shall now give you a real-time tour and augmented reality fire in the hole. Thank you for having me in your home or office. <clears throat> it's inconceivable to me. It's unconscionable that a fair-minded individual would utilize the time otherwise afforded for launching a brave new and interesting technology to promote their own selfish interests. Let's take a look at a clip from the upcoming Sherlock Holmes due out Christmas Day 2009. He is as troubled and as gifted as he ever was. Try another turn, I dare you. I double dare you. Wow, wasn't it astonishing to see Robert Downey Jr. live on a magazine page? I would have loved that. Now let's come to 2010. 
an MIT genius from India called Pranav Mistry discovered a technology called the Sixth Sense technology. This was an extended version of Ivan's prototype, but he took it on a completely different level. Let's check it out. The most interesting thing about this particular technology is that you can carry your digital world with you wherever you go with you. You can start using any surface, any wall around you as an interface. The camera is actually tracking all your gestures, whatever you are doing with your hands, it's understanding that gesture. And actually, if you see, there are some color markers that in the beginning version we were using over there, that you stop by a wall and start painting on that wall. But I'm more excited that you can actually take it outside. Rather than getting your camera out of your pocket, you can just do the gesture of taking a photo, and it takes photo for you. Right? So, so we are looking for an, an era where computing will actually merge with the physical world. And of course, if you don't have any surface, you can start using your palm for simple operation. I'm here, I'm dialing a phone number just using my hand. Yep. The camera is actually not only understanding your hand movements, but interestingly, it's also able to understand what objects you are holding in your hand. This was Thank Obama's you. last visit uh, last week Thank to you, MIT. MIT. And in particular, I want to thank two outstanding uh, MIT So I was seeing the live Eric. of his talk outside uh, in just a newspaper. Your newspaper will show you live of your weather information rather than having updated like a, you have to check your computer in order to do that, right? You can of course watch movies. Good afternoon. My name is Russell and I am a wilderness explorer in Tribe 54. And you can of course play games. Uh, here the camera is actually understanding how you're holding the paper and playing the car racing game. Many of you already must have thought, okay, you can browse, yeah. Of course you can browse uh, to any, any website. So you can do all sort of computing on a piece of paper wherever you need it. So, but more interestingly, I'm interested that how we can take that in a more dynamic way. When I come back to my desk, I can just pinch that information back to my desktop so that I can use my, my full-size computer. And why only computers? We can, we can just play with papers. Like, paper world is interesting uh, to play with. So here I'm taking a part of a document and putting over here the second part of a, from second place, and I'm actually modifying the information that I have over there. So as a last thought, I think that integrating information to our everyday objects will not only help us to get rid of the digital divide, the gap between these two worlds, but will also help us in some way to stay human, to, to be more connected to our physical world. And it will actually help us not end up being machines sitting in front of another machines. Simply genius. I am out of words. But technology didn't stop there. In 2014, Google came out with a concept called Google Glasses. Now, I'm very sure you all must have heard about it. But there were two major reasons for its utter failure. The first was, who would want a radiating emitting device all day on your eyes? And the second was, a person standing in front of you, you would never know who is recording and who is not. Because it's all about a privacy issue. Now. After the failure of Google Glasses, Google came out with a cheaper version of virtual reality called Google Cardboard. In 2015, Oculus Rift, now currently owned by Facebook, came out with Oculus Glasses and they instantly became very popular. But there were other major players who also started entering the virtual reality market. Microsoft was one of them. But Microsoft took it to a completely different level by introducing HoloLens. That was in a true sense an augmented reality device where they were able to connect the virtual world with her real world. Let's check it out. Look around. Technology is all around us. We use it in every aspect of our lives. It enables us to do amazing things. But what if we could go further? What if we could go beyond the screen where your digital world is blended with your real world? Now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. 
new ways to share ideas with How each other. Going your end? I just put the images in one drive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. Now what? And tighten here and here. New ways to collaborate and explore the places we've never been. Look at this formation. Let's take a closer look. And new ways to create the things we imagine. Because when you change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. This is your world with holograms. After all these that we have seen, I feel the future holds a seamless integration between the humans and technology. Do like, share and subscribe this video guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.